So this time on Weasel Judd Digital, we're going to be taking a look at the TIE Interceptor. We're going to looking at all the various equipment that it has available to it and some of the really good builds that you can make out of it so that you can be a really effective dogfighter out there in the field. So this is, of course, our TIE Interceptor. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our primary weapon systems. Now, first off, we have our standard laser cannon. It's not bad. Good solid DPS, decent ammo capacity, 1000 meter range. Does not shoot very fast though. Not bad at tracking long range targets because um, you can kind of adjust your aim accordingly. Your Plasburst laser cannon is a charge based weapon. It does a lot of DPS, but you do have to charge that weapon to use it. It has a very short range on top of that with only a 600 meter range. That all combined means it's kind of a difficult weapon to really use and use effectively. Um, you do have to charge it, to fire it. Um, it's not going to be that great of a dogfighting weapon. Ion Cannon does a lot of ion damage. It's great for taking out shields, especially on those rebel fighters. Good ammo capacity, good range. Fires fast enough that it's pretty useful. Then we have our rapid fire cannon. Good solid DPS, fires very fast, good ammo capacity. The range, it's very short range. So this is something where you're gonna get in close, you're gonna do that burst damage, get out. Um, the, the good side of things here is it's very easy. Once you get into that kind of range to hit those targets. 600 meter range sounds like a, a negative, but honestly, hitting things in that 600 to 1,000 meter range, unless they're flying in a very straight line, it's a difficult thing to do. If they're maneuvering at all or they have a weird angle, it's going to be hard to lead them. When you get within 600 meters, it's almost just point and shoot. I mean, you're just going to hit them if you can get it close to them. So I really prefer this rapid fire cannon. I think you'll be happy with it. I think I will too. Next up, our left auxiliary, we're going to be using our repair system. Um, that's really essential for your fighters, especially on the Imperial side where you don't have any shields to, to regen back. For our main, uh, for our secondary auxiliary, which is going to be our main damage auxiliary, is going to be the Sneer Anti-Starfighter Missile. Decent damage, good quick lock on time, long range, four second cooldown. It's not a bad little system. Um, travels fast, has strong homing. It's a nice addi additive damage to your, your blasters. For countermeasures, you have your Seeker Warheads. You do have some other options, but honestly, your Seeker Warheads are what you go with. There are the Chaff Particles, 200 meter range, area of effect. Um, lifespan is only three seconds, so they sit there for three seconds before they dissipate. Nine second cooldown, only three ammo. These are not that great. The missile has to be coming from directly behind you for this to really help. If it's coming from the side or top or below or coming from in front of you, these chaff particles do nothing. They're not going to help you. The Sneer Sensor Jammer, four second duration where it will break any locked missiles and prevent any further locks on you, but it's got a 26 second cooldown and you can only do it once, so the cooldown isn't even that important. Um, not a great system, it'll only save your butt once and not for a very long time. The Sensor Inverter has an area effect of 300 meters, so if that missile is very close to you, you can actually have it redirected back to the person that attacked you with the missile. That is pretty interesting and it's fun to see happen. But with only two uses, with you having to let the missile get that close, with that long of a cooldown, I don't find it to be all that useful, whereas the Seeker Warheads are great. They're very dependable, very easy to use. You have missiles that have a lock on you, fire this off, it'll seek them down, it'll sh take those missiles out of play. 
For Hull, um, you have a couple of options. There's the blah, 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 blah. there's the reflect hull, which has um, stealthing capabilities, which I don't find all that useful. There's the lamina steel hull, which reduces your auxiliary damage taken, but increases primary damage taken. So it reduces the amount of damage you take from missiles, but increases the amount of damage you take from blasters. Hopefully, we're not going to be taking a lot of damage from missiles. So boosting our damage resistance to missiles doesn't help that much. And then there's the dampener hull, which I love. It increases hostile lock time, so it takes them twice as long to lock missiles onto you. And it only lowers your max health by 10%, which isn't a lot. I find that trade-off worth it. Between the dampener hull and the seeker warheads, you should be able to avoid most, if not all, missiles. Your engine, you have a couple options. There's the twin thrust engine, Increases max speed, but lowers acceleration maneuverability. Well, this is a dogfighting ship. We don't want to lose that maneuverability. There is the propulsion engine, which increases acceleration, but again, reduces maneuverability. And then we have the microthrust engine, which increases our maneuverability while lowering our max speed and acceleration. Max speed is not all that important in dogfighting, and acceleration you won't really notice that much anyways. That maneuverability, though, that you will notice. And the added maneuverability to this already very maneuverable ship will really pay off in their dogfights. So there we go. We got our rapid-fire cannon, repair systems, anti-starfighter missile, seeker warheads, dampener hull, and microthrust engine. As you can see, we play with the stats a lot on this ship. Our hull is down by 77 points. Our max speed is reduced by 51, our max acceleration is reduced by 76, but our maneuverability is increased by 25 points, making you one of the most maneuverable ships in the game. You will notice that. Now for our second build, I like to do something a little bit different. Again, I like to keep the rapid fire cannon. I'll keep the repair system. Here, instead of the anti-starfighter missile, the other options, which I didn't even go over before. You have the Seeker Mine, which is great for anyone that's tailing you. You can drop that, it'll seek them. The thing only lasts for 10 seconds before it goes away. Um, and its arming range is 200 meters, so the enemy ship has to get within 200 meters for it to take effect. The only time this is really useful is when someone is chasing you. Um, if you used it with a team of players, you could maybe cut off an area of space. Um, but it's not that great. The onslaught rockets are like the barrage rockets for the for the rebels. Um, very fast firing, dumb fire weapons, no tracking. The cluster missile is an interesting one. Um, lock is required. Damage is 450. Fires up to four shots. Now. The lock-on time per missile is 8 seconds, so it takes a little over 3 seconds to lock all 4 of them. Then you fire them, then you got a 12 second cooldown before you can do 450, before you can do these rockets again for another 450 damage each. That's why I like this anti-starfighter missile better. 4 second cooldown, 1.3 second lock-on. This might be able to hit a wide array of enemies, but um, it's so slow, it's not very useful. It's also not going to be good against capital ships, which is what we're building here is kind of a hybrid capital ship anti-starfighter. You also have the targeting jammer. Um, makes it so you can get closer to AI ships, gives you some, some stealth capabilities. For what I'm doing, I'm going to build it with the Onslaught rockets. We're going to be giving up our anti-starfighter rockets for the onslaught rockets to help us do damage to capital ships. Countermeasures, obviously, we're going to keep those as seeker warheads. For the hull, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our dampener hull. And for the engine, we're going to keep our microthrust engines. So we're going to start off with our anti starfighter ship here, with our anti starfighter missiles. And let's go ahead and take that out for a quick little 
training run here. Get some practice in with it. I'm going to switch over to the Galactic Empire. We're going to leave it in story mode. I know story mode is not very realistic, but we're not going for realistic here. We're just trying to show, demonstrate the abilities of this fighter. So we have this already set up. Let's go ahead and launch. Now, as stock, this is one of the fighters. This was one of the faster ships. Um, we're not going to be using it as stock, of course, though. Let's go with X and Y wings. This part is you can increase the speed of this guy pretty quickly. Switch them over to the weapons when you need to and start building up that charge so you really have a lot of attack power. Now you do have a dead zone where you're going to be using your missiles. Because you can't do any primary damage until you get to 600 meters. So again, your focus here is maneuverability, so even at max speed you can turn on a dime. You got a really good rapid fire weapon system, keep those enemies within 600 meters and you're going to tear them to shreds. And you got your quick fire missiles that as you can see lock very quickly, track and move very quickly too. Oh, he shot it. A lucky dog. So that's our anti-starfighter version. We're going to go ahead and switch to our anti-capital ship version. And we are going to deploy a corvette. Now one thing to know about the Corvettes is they actually have a great weak point. They don't have any weapons that can really reach behind their ship, and they have that huge bank of engines. So you can just sneak right in there and just sit in that blind spot. The other interesting thing about the CR-90s is the vast majority of their weapons sit in one area on the ship. This makes them pretty easy to just outright disable if you need to. See, so we can just hide over here in the engine slipstream, and they can't hurt me. We can use this time to just destroy their shields. Now, this ship is never going to be a great anti-capital ship fighter. But it's a way that gives you a hybrid of both. You're still highly maneuverable, so you're still effective against fighters. But you also have the weaponry that you can use to help destroy their capital ships. When you combine both the missiles and your blasters, you can see that you can do a considerable amount of damage. Uh oh, he stopped and I parked in his, in his burn range. Again, with the Imperial ships, you need those repair kits because you do not have regenerating shields. So that repair kit's the only thing that's gonna keep you alive. For reference, there's the weapons, right there. They sit right on top in the middle of the ship. There's six turrets. Um, very easy to just slip by and nail all those guys. 
and then you basically disable the thing. So there you have it. There's your Imperial Interceptor. Um, still fast, very maneuverable, very good at taking out enemy ships. And with slight modifications, you can even be decent at doing some damage to capital ships. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you with more info in the future.